couple jobs ago, I was a full-time director of operations for like a bougie overnight summer camp in Maine. And when I took the job, I was living in Florida where, pff, hello, I had just kind of gotten back into right. golf after not playing for maybe four, five, six years in my mid-20s when I was just kind of figuring myself out. And right. uh, <laughs> and then a buddy of mine was like, hey, I'm going to go play golf. And that reminded me that I knew how to do it. And so I went out and just kind of got back into it. But when I took this job, I got up here. And again, it was with a summer camp. And I didn't I didn't really understand the weather. My folks were from Michigan, but I was born in you know Virginia on their way down south when they finally settled in North Florida for a while. So when I took it, my dad was like, he's like, you know, it's not it's going to be a little bit different with your golf routine. I was like, no, no, it's fine. I was like, we don't really start up operations until like mid to late May, you know, and then I'm done in around like, you know, early September. And he kind of looked at me like, yeah, that's that's it. That's yeah. the only time. And I was like, no, no, no. I looked it up. The courses open up sooner and they stay open later, which is still true. There's still these like shoulder seasons, but they're, oh sure. God, <laughs> I was playing a place called Sebago, Point Sebago in Maine. And it was May and there were black flies out and it was quote unquote mud season Oof. and they had temporary greens. I did two summers and like two full years in Maine at this job when I finally was like, I can't anymore. Like I miss it too yeah. much. Uh, you know, and so I took, I just got out of it and that, that's when I, you know, kind of rediscovered the, the off season, the simulator. But then that first summer, I, I just, wow. I took the cover, it took the cover off, just went, went full bore top down hundred miles an hour, played as much as humanly possible to a point where I had to go see a chiropractor and my, my spine was like four degrees <laughs> off. Uh, and that's when I rediscovered yoga myself just for pliability oh, yeah. and, you know, to be able to actually swing the club and play. But uh, it's been it's been fun just to get back into it because also I started posting a, a couple of years ago when I realized I like some other things, but I'm truly passionate about this game and, you know, yeah. the ability mm -hmm. to bring people together, to provide challenges, to provide, you know, uh, discipline, integrity, life lessons, the whole bit. And you can play it your whole life. And that's what my mom told me when I picked it up because I wanted to quit baseball as soon as I became a single digit handicap and was going to, you know, go try out for the high school team. I had, I was going to have to quit baseball because it was a spring sport in Florida. Mm -hmm. And she just said, you can play golf the rest of your life. And she's like, I'm going to be honest with you. You got about two, three years of baseball left. <laughs> and Literally. luckily I didn't Literally. quit and it did shift to a fall sport my junior year. So I was able to play both. Uh, but it, it, it brings people together. It provides challenges and I'm on my own little like personal tour this summer of trying to, you know, actually advance in a qualifier about four years ago started playing in some, the, the mass open, the mass amateur, the mass mid amateur and the mass public links qualifiers. And, uh, I would just go out and, you know, shoot 90 in May in the first one for the mass open and just kind of like was nervous as shit. And last year after doing it for three summers in a row, I finally missed the cut on all of them, but I only missed it by a stroke or two. And I okay, didn't have any yeah. of those like blow up holes and everything. So I'm really kind of, that, that's my mentality this summer is, there's three of them that I'm going to be playing in the mass amateur, the mass mid amateur and the mass, uh, public links. And they're at courses okay. I'm familiar with. I've shot good scores at. So if I can just kind of check my brain at the door, uh, my, my TJ breaks 80 is Boudreaux ba you know, makes the cut. Hell yeah. I love it. <laughs> cool. I mean, I kind of, I was just going to ask you like what your goal for the season was, but that's like perfect. So hell, way to be a mind reader. <laughs> <laughs> that's my goal for the season, you... but go ahead. Yeah, when did you kind of start up your your um like morning coffee talks then and then and also like when did you start the divots and pivots show? Love that. It, <clears throat> during COVID, uh I was working from home like everybody else and I work uh, my future former 9 to 5 is at a, is as a director of membership for a nonprofit that uh that works with summer camps so I'm like tangentially in the industry but I get to play mm -hmm. golf which is wonderful. So during COVID, I was working from home, had a ton of time on my hands and had a brand new house and a you know, wife and a new baby and just needed something to kind of like relieve the stress mentally. And so I looked up writing jobs. I used to be a creative writing teacher. I was a middle school teacher for seven years down in Florida and taught creative writing, civics and world geography and humanities. That was the other class. And I was a dean, but that's neither here nor there. So I looked up writing jobs, and I got a job freelancing for a podcast, website, and magazine called Stick and Hack. They were out of you know the the, the Midwest, Indiana, and uh, they did a coffee table magazine for a couple of years that I wrote for and, and edited. <clears throat> and then yeah, you know, funding ran out. It was it was a startup. It was everybody's kind of side gig. The main guy now uh, runs a media company out there, and a uh, great guy. I, I had a lot of fun working there. But then when that paid writing ran out, I still kept on writing in the mornings just as like an exercise. 
and then it became tedious and I realized like, why not try just talking it out? Because really that's how I used to write anyways, which would be, I would just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk to myself either out loud or in my head. And then when something clicked, that's when I knew I had a hook. So that's kind of like just, I got a little putting green back there. So in the mornings, I'll just be pacing back and forth with a cup of coffee, kind of thinking about what I want to say. So instead of writing it down, just decided to look into the camera and uh, start posting. And so Monday through Friday, mm -hmm. uh, before I go off about my day, I, you know, put out a little, you know, minute and a half rant, for lack of a better phrase, about something related to the sport of golf. Oh, and yeah. then that's actually cool. it was... And it was like 2021 January. I remember that's when Andrew put out on Twitter. He was he was he's a he's a great fantasy sports guy. <clears throat> Pardon me for football and basketball. But the site that he was writing for was like, hey, we need golf. Nobody has it. And he goes, I don't know shit about it, but I'll look into it and we'll start something. So he just put out a tweet that said, "Is there anybody out there who has PGA Tour knowledge and is looking to talk, you know, once a week for an hour about golf?" And so I sent him, I DM'd him a GIF, and it was the uh, uh, Val Kilmer from Tombstone that just says, "I'm your Huckleberry." And then we yeah. did a Zoom, <laughs> we did a Zoom call like three days later, and now we're on season three. And uh, every Tuesday night, again, 8 p.m., we do it live, and then um, and then do the podcast release the next day. And it's been fun because I knew so little about fantasy sports. And really now the show's gotten much more into the game game and having guests on. And we still stick to our, you know, our core, which was fantasy betting. Uh, but we've kind of gotten creative with it. But I knew about like fantasy football and shit from doing leagues and stuff. But I didn't know how the golf thing would work or what the different strategies would look like or, you know, different ways to engage with it. Uh, so that was fun getting introduced to that. And he was super, super green when it came to the sport or even to the different layers to it, or, you know, these mini tours. So it's been a fun kind of joint journey now. And he's, uh, he's, he's starting to pick up the game more and more. I think he would be at Andrew breaks a hundred right now would be his, his <laughs> That's level. Cool, though. If we had, to, I think he, I think he, he might say he's better, which no disrespect, Andrew, love you. Uh, but I think right now, <laughs> if we counted everything and held a gun to his head, it would be triple digits for sure. So it's, hey, it's so again, you know, it divots, but it's somewhere. a fun journey and yeah, and, it, and it's, you know, golf, you got to start somewhere. You're going to, yeah. no matter what, like, I think I ended last summer, I shot 68. It was the very end of the season. It was great conditions. And that was the last round I shot. I'm scared shitless to go back out there because that's what I walked yeah. off with. And now I know if I don't shoot 68, yeah. well, damn it, I've done it. I did it before I did. You know what, what's wrong with me? And so I'm already well, in my own kitchen. You'll probably just shoot an 86. <clears throat> <laughs> probably and blasphemy for you even putting that thought into my brain thanks for watching today's episode to see more of our content be sure to follow us on instagram tiktok and subscribe on youtube we can be found at basic bogeys on all platforms thanks we hope to see you on the next one